one with another in the blood of Jesus. His son cleanseth us from all sin. For now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. Anybody thankful and grateful for the blood? Do you have the testimony that it was the blood that was applied to my life that cleansed me, that washed me, that made me whiter than snow? Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house on today. Oh, hallelujah. Someone that knows and understands that it was the blood of Jesus that made the difference in my... Yes, I'm talking about it. It was the blood that made the difference in my life. If the word don't move you, if the spirit don't move you, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. It was the blood. 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 That was shed for me way back on Calvary. It was the blood. It was the blood. I know it was the blood. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. When I was lost, anybody got a testimony in the house today? Can anybody testify? Oh yeah, 
Josh, you got it. Hallelujah. Come on, praise team. Y'all ready? The blood. The blood still works. Oh, the blood still works. The blood still works. The blood still works. The blood still works. It will never. It will never. The blood still works. Oh, the blood still works. The blood still works. Hallelujah. How many of you know the blood still works? The blood works? still works. Oh, it will never. It will never. Never. never lose its power. Never. 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 Never.
Don't you take a few minutes engage the presence of the Lord right now come on come on lift him up open up your mouth and lift him up open up your mouth and give him glory open up your mouth and give him praise you ought to say Jesus there's nobody like you thank you for the blood come on come on thank you thank you come on let a thank you come out of your mouth Come on, let a thank you come out of your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let a thank you come forth. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know it's hot, but thank you, Jesus. I know I'm tired in my body, but thank you, Jesus. I don't know if I'm coming or going, but thank you, Jesus. Come on, you ought to say thank you. Before I lay hands on anybody today, thank you. Before I pray at this altar, thank you. Before I hear the word, thank you. Before I usher, thank you. Before I work the sound, thank you. Before I work the live stream, thank you. Before I drive the bus, thank you. Before I enter into your presence, into your house, I say thank you. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Come on, talk to him just a few more moments. Come on, talk to him, talk to him. Come on, there's got to be a sound. Release the sound. Come on, release the sound in this place. We command it in the name of Jesus that the sound be released in this place. Come on, come on, come on, release that praise. Open up your mouth and talk to your God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. You are awesome. Spectacular, marvelous, wonderful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, from the pulpit to the floor, we should be talking to him. Come on, there's a song that says, I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we feel you in this room on today. Y'all feel the presence of the Lord in here? Do y'all feel the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. He became sin. No sin that 
that we might become his righteousness. His body was broken for our transgressions. But I'm so glad that's not where the story ends. Come on, the lamb. Day. Since that day, the sin has lost its grip on me. Everybody can sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is alive. Hallelujah. He is alive. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, he became. He became sin. Who knew no sin? Who knew no sin? That we might that be, we might become his righteousness. His body was broken. His body was broken for our transgression. Come on, I'm so glad. I'm so out of my grave clothes whom the sun sets free is free indeed morning's here and I'm grateful for the Savior got up in victory I'm dancing out of my grave clothes whom the sun sets who free, sun sets free, free indeed. is free come on morning is here morning, morning I'm grateful for the Savior got up
I'm so glad that he got up so I could get up. Oh, hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands unto the Lord? Come on, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm so glad that I know him. Are you glad that you know him? Come on, some people might say, I know him to be a healer. I know him to be a provider. I know him to be a, a way maker. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus.
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. So even when, even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Way maker, miracle worker. Way maker. Miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker, your way maker, miracle worker. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I can't think it, you're working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Still working, he's 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 still moving, he's still moving, he's still saving, he's still saving. He's still he Deacon Shirley, he's still healing. He's still healing. He's still healing. He's still moving. He's still moving. Out of all, he's still touching. He's still touching. He never stops. He never stops. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops. He never stops working. Come on, Bethesda, you need to receive that in this room today. Whatever you stand in need of. Oh, he's a way maker. He way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. Hey, 
there be no way. He'll make a way like he did for Israel when he split the sea and he called them to triumph. They walked right on through, but that's not it. The water swallowed up the entire army. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. signs and wonders it'll follow them that believe anybody need a miracle in this place maybe it's just me I'm looking for a miracle I expect the impossible oh miracle working Come on, I got one. I got two. It's me, oh God, standing in the need. I know you to be a miracle working, God. I know that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us it's working for your good i said it's working for your good it might not look like it it might not feel like it it might not seem like it oh but it's working it's working it's working it's working it's working it's working it's working, it's working. Bishop, it's working. Pastor, it's working. Brother Green, it's working. Sister Harper, it's working. Sister Annette, it's working. It's working. Come on, it's working. Come on, it's working. Sooner or later. It's going to turn in my favor. It's working for me. Come on, anybody here need God to work some things out for you? Oh, come on. Miracles are in the room today. Signs, wonders are in the room today. Come on, anybody here with deaf ears and want to be healed? Come on, anybody here? You got tumors, cancer cells in your body, 
and you want prayer to be healed? Anybody with cancer? God is a consuming fire. He can burn up cancer right now. Anybody battling depression and anxiety that want to be healed? Come on, I wish I had some people coming to the front right now in faith. Anyone got a situation that they need the Lord to work out for them? Come on, I'm telling you, it's here. He's working. And because he's working, it's working. Anybody stuck saying, God, I'm tired of being in this place? Say, today's my exodus. This is my exodus. I'm coming out without a doubt. And I'm going to be that man, that woman of God that he has called me to be. No more am I going to sit in the background and sit on the sideline. But I'm getting in and I'm going to fight. And I'm going to run this race. I'm going to run this race. I'm going to make it to the finish line. Come on, just begin to worship him right now. Come on, lift those hands, lift those hands. Come on, he is here right now. Come on, he's still moving. Come on, he's still proving. Why don't you cry out to your almighty God right now? Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, I wish y'all would worship with me. Come on, come on, believe, come on. In the name of Jesus. We minister faith. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, it's working. It's working. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? According to your faith, be it up to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
Some praise. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say he's a great God. Yes, he is. Someone say he's a great God. Yes, he is. Come on, he's a great God. Great God. Hallelujah. There is none like him. He's great. There's none beside him, none beneath him, none above him. There's only him. Yes. What's his name? Jesus. Come on, say Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we praise you for your greatness Jesus. today. Yes, your great God. Hallelujah. We honor you, Lord. We praise you, God. I want to thank you. Somebody say thank you. Somebody say thank you. Thank you. Come on, give him a thank you right now. Thank you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you. God, we praise you. We honor you. Thank you. Lift your name up high. Thank you. Somebody say, I will lift his name on high. I will lift his name on high. I will lift his name on high. He has exalted his name above all blessings and praise. Come on, someone, give him that praise. Give him that praise. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, thank you. We thank you, Lord. <laughs> work right now. Work. Somebody say work, Lord. It's only you can. Father, we want to thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Let your blessings fall. Somebody say, let your blessings fall. Somebody say, follow me, Jesus. Someone say, even me, even me. Even me, Lord, even me. Let your blessings fall on me. Even me, Lord, even me. Let your blessings fall on me. Someone say, even me, Lord, even me. Let your blessings fall on me. Even me, Lord, even me. Let your blessings fall on me. Somebody say, who me? The Lord say, yes, you. You say, who me? He say, yes, you. He said, I'll fall on you if you trust me. Somebody say, even me, Lord. Even me. Let your blessings fall on me. Even me. Let your blessings fall on me. 
Someone say, even me. Someone say, even me. Someone say, rain on me, Holy Ghost. Rain on me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm waiting, Lord. Rain on me. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You never can tell what God's going to do. Someone say, hallelujah. Someone say, great God, great God. Someone say, even now, Lord, even now. Right now, Lord, fall on someone right now. Lord, we're waiting, we're trusting, we're giving you the praise. We're glorifying you even right now. Oh, God, I thank you. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Lord. Nobody, nobody but you. Hallelujah. Nobody but you, Jesus. Nobody but you. Nobody. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you can make me holy or heal me too. When I was in trouble, you bought me through. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you can make me holy and heal me too. When I was in trouble, you brought me through. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Come on, let's give God a praise. Man, I'm here today to receive the offering. We want to thank God for being a ministering presence in the midst of his people. Thank you all for coming to share with us this day. Amen. We appreciate what the Lord is doing in his house. Amen. Perhaps some of you have had a busy week, and if not, it's time to get busy. Amen. And so we've, we've had a wonderful week of worship. We weren't here, but we were with the Art Conference, Amen, the Apostolic Restoration Conference, and Bishop, Amen, William L. Harris, Amen, Senior. He, he ministered a tremendous, he ministers a great conference there, and we appreciate being just a small part of it. And so we're thankful. I'm sorry if some of you didn't hear about it. Uh, perhaps we would have, should have made a larger announcement. But uh, it was a wonderfully attended, and we appreciate that. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. At this time, we want our officials to come forward. And I, I suppose we're going to say the, the cr decree, the giver's decree. How many givers we got in the house today? Y'all yeah. raise your hand. Hallelujah. This, do this doesn't work without your participation. I said, this doesn't work without your participation. Somebody said, the Lord don't need money. No, he don't need it, but we do. We need it to pay the bills. We need it to be here. And so he has a giving plan. I think this is, what's the name, Barry, Pastor Barry? The fourth week. Building for the future. Someone say building for the future. And so those of you that have uh, committed uh, your finances to that end, I think that this is that day that we give those monies. It used to be called Rally Day, but we are rallying yet, amen, to build for the future. And so we're thankful you're here with us today. Come on, let's give God a praise. <laughs> Sister, I see Evangelist Barbara Johnson here again today. God appreciate her. We need to appreciate all the uh, seniors we have. Let's give God praise for the seniors. <laughs> I'm looking out there, I see, I see plenty of black hair. And you wonder where the se seniors are gone. Well, you know what happens. And I, I, I used to have black hair. Amen. And I'm, I'm getting, I'm a senior now. I will be 69 years old next week. <laughs> Almost 70. So <laughs> my wife, she will be 70 June the 27th. And so we're aging and the Lord is blessing us. Let's give God praise for his favor today. 
So we're going to say the, 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 the giver's decree this morning. Let's read this all together. Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally, and I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have in abundance every favor and earthly blessings. All my needs are met, and I abound in every good work. Because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs. In Jesus' name, someone say amen. Let me say this before we give. <clears throat> For those of you that don't know my story, we have eight years children together, my wife and I. And my wife had to leave her job. Amen. We was having, you know, it gets too costly to pay the babysitter. So she had to go home and babysit. And uh, she worked out of the house and did some things, kept some other children to help us. But we di I did not start tithing when I became a pastor. Okay, or when, or when things got better for me. I started with what I had. I just had to make sacrifices in other places. I'm not going to make this long, but somebody, when I, when, I, when I got a little bit more money and started wearing suits and some more suits, they said, you, like, I was dressing nice now. Well, I, I couldn't buy all them other clothes because I had to buy them for my kids. So we sacrificed. I sacrificed and gave them. Amen. And God has blessed us tremendously. Amen. And I thank him for that. Amen. So down through the years, amen, I've always been a tither. Amen. When I was poorer, then I was poor. And I'm a little better off now, but I'm not rich. But God certainly has taken care of us, and I appreciate that. So don't, 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 don't slack on giving and support. We're not robbing your money. Amen. We're just doing and providing, amen, what is needed for God's house. And this is a beautiful house of the Lord. God has done a tremendous work here. I appreciate it. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We're going to come around. And I've already given electronically. So if y'all see me not put nothing in the pot, it's because I've already done it. Amen. There are many ways to give. Okay. See, uh, Square, Zale, Cash App is somewhere. It's Cash App up there. Okay, I don't see it, but he says it's up there. It's the middle. All right, cash up is the middle one. And then sister is out in the hall on this end, this north end of the church for your swipe, if you want to swipe. Amen. And give then. Everyone stand, please. Everyone stand and walk. Even if you've given, please stand so others will not have to step over you. Amen. Hallelujah. Great God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Great God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Freedom, let there be freedom. freedom. Hallelujah. If, if there's someone who could not walk and you'd like someone to receive your offering, raise your hand. We'd send somebody there to assist you. 
right. Come on, let's give God a praise. Thank him. Thank him for his blessings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's say thank you, Lord. Lord, receive our gifts and let them be what the church needs in Jesus' name. Deacon uh, Shirley, bless the offering. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. So we're getting ready to go before the Lord. Amen. In the word. I want you to help me sing this song. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never Come on and sing it, the blood, the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary. be strength from day to day it will never lose his power come on for reaches for it reaches to the highest Mountain, mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley, valley, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. One more time, sing it for it reaches, for it reaches to the highest mountain, mountain, and it flows to the That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose his power. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, God, and we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your presence, God, and your power that we feel even right now. Lord, we pray, God, that as we speak your word, God, that it would pierce the heart of every individual under the sound of my voice, whether they be in the room, God, or watching on Facebook Live. 
Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would touch somebody, God, that you would break chains, God, that you would deliver in the name of Jesus. Trouble the waters of baptism, Lord. Fill someone with the Holy Ghost, God. God, as I hide myself, Lord, under your mighty hand and shadow, Lord, I pray, God, that you would, oh, God, speak everything that you desire to speak, God. Lord, I pray, God, that you would set a watch over my mouth even right now, Lord. Lord, that only what comes out of my mouth, God, will be filtered through the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to grab your Bibles. I want you to turn to John chapter number 1. John chapter number 1. John chapter number 1, verses number 10 through 12. And then we also will turn to Matthew chapter number 4. Matthew chapter number 4. Do just a little bit of reading. Then I will read Matthew 5 and 14 in your hearing. John 1 and 10 says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And he came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Matthew 4 and 13 says, And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, the borders of Zebulon and Nep Nep Neptalim. I believe I said that right. Bishop, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Amen. <laughs> said, but that it might be fulfilled by, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, which, amen, Galilee of the Gentiles, says the people which sat in darkness, saw great light. Everybody say great light. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprang up. Matthew 5 and 14 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. I want to speak to you this afternoon, amen, as the Holy Ghost is impressed upon me, as we are entering into Apostolic Heritage Week. So I just want to minister about our apostolic heritage of power. Heritage of power. And the subtopic of be the light. Turn and tell your neighbor, be the light. Tell him you are the light. Amen. You can be seated. So I thank the Lord for the time me and my wife had away. Amen. I thank you all for your prayers and amen. Generous, amen. Gifts, amen, that help make our time away. That much pleasant, amen, is most of what we did was sleep. Amen. We needed to catch up on some sleep. I don't think that you actually really ever catch up on sleep, but amen, we most certainly tried to. Amen. And so I have learned, amen, in order for me to really get rest, I have to leave 465. Amen. And so I thank the Lord that God allotted the opportunity for us to leave, get time to be away. 
amen, as well as over the last almost month, amen, just sit and enjoy the word of God. How many of you enjoyed the ministry that has come in over the last month? Amen. I thank the Lord, amen, for men of God, amen, that are able and capable of coming in and ministering to us, not just a sermon, Amen. But I believe, amen, as, mo as well as this week it being Apostolic Heritage Week, amen, as we are going to hear sound teaching and preaching. I'm telling you, don't want to miss this week. Amen. But I'm thankful to the Lord, amen, that we did not just hear, amen, good sermons, but, amen, men, amen, ministered, amen, to us by the Holy Ghost of, amen, imparting some things into the congregation, Amen. Giving in the understanding, amen, of what our recompense is. As, amen, Bishop Fields preached a dynamic word, amen, about the recompense of the gospel. Amen. We had men come in declaring and reassuring, amen, and igniting a fire of the Holy Ghost down on the inside. I don't know about you, amen, but I'm fired up and ready to be about my father's business. Amen. As I thank the Lord, amen, for Pastor Santi, amen, from Miami, Florida, coming and sharing the burden, amen, of reaching a city, amen, by any means necessary. Amen. The testimonies that he told, amen, were truly a testimony of the power of God. Amen. And not just the power of God, but the power, amen, that he has gifted, amen, and given to his people. Amen. Blood-bought, spirit-filled believers. Amen. God has given us power. Somebody shout power. He's given us power to be witnesses. He's given us power, amen, to turn the spiritual tides in a spiritual battle. How many of you know that we are in a spiritual war right now? Amen. We are in a spiritual war right now that is happening around the world. Amen. And truth be told, it's even happening right on our front doorsteps. Amen. As we have witnessed and seen families that are connected to this church. Amen. That have been, amen, devastated by tragedy after tragedy. But I thank the Lord. Amen. That God, praise the Lord, amen, will not be outdone by the enemy. Amen. God will not be outdone by the enemy. I thank the Lord for, amen, Pastor Santi telling the testimony, amen, about the man, praise God, that the men that came in to rob a member of his church and, amen, how he began to testify about how they shot one bullet, amen, and it failed to eject. They shot another bullet, amen, and it penetrated, it hit him, but it didn't penetrate into his body, amen, and he showed the picture of how the bullet actually bent, amen, out of shape, and the police officers said they had never seen anything, amen, like that before, amen, letting us know that God protects his people, amen, turn and tell your neighbor, God protects his people, God protects his people, amen, and the most powerful thing, amen, about that testimony, amen, was not just that God protected, amen, the man of God that owned the business, amen, but God gave that man the boldness while the men were fidgeting with the gun trying to take this man's life. The man shouted towards them and he said, don't you know that I am a child of God? What does that mean to us, praise God? And what was he declaring to them? That the enemy tried it, but he's failing. I'm going to say that one more time. The enemy tried it, but he failed. The enemy tried to take that man's life. But when you are a child of the living God, God protects his people. And he gives you the boldness to declare in the face of danger who you are. Listen, my brothers and sisters, when you are a child of God, you don't have no reason or right to be mad. or You don't have no reason or right to be scared of the devil. But let me tell you something. 
when you're a child of the living God and you know who you are, amen, you don't have to fear the devil, but you can stand in the face of the enemy. I'm not telling you to go and find danger, but when danger comes at your doorstep, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be dismayed, but you can stand flat-footed and declare the word of the Lord. Can you stand to your feet? Can you declare that God is great right now? Come on, t- come on, declare right now that God is great. Uh, come on, take the next 10 seconds uh, and declare the wonderful work and power of God. Uh, declare that the Lord, he is your protector. Uh, declare that the Lord, he is great and mighty. You don't, you can be seated. Let me slow down for a bit. Amen. But listen, I'm telling you, friends of mine, amen, if you only knew the kind of power and authority you possess, amen. But listen, we are in such a crucial time as we know that the world, amen, has never been as bad as it is right now, amen, as we are seeing tragic situations happening, amen, and they're hitting close to home. I know some of you can identify with what I'm talking about, about tragedy hitting close to home, amen, tragedy hitting our loved ones, tragedy hitting our communities, praise God, but amen, the apostle Paul said, and he said about this time that we are living in high time. Everybody say high time. He said it's a high time, amen. That means, amen, it is a critical time. When you look up that word, it deals with critical times, amen. As our world is in a critical time where, amen, they are literally calling right, wrong, and wrong, right, amen. It is now considered to be, amen, it's considered abnormal or you just look weird, amen. If you abide by the traditional standards that even society has won hell. Amen. Listen, they're calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. Amen. As you will find even in your Bible, amen, that the pandemic that we are still feeling the effects of today, amen, is nothing to be compared, amen, what is coming the days of head. Amen. I wish I could tell you that it's going to get better in the world, but it's going to get darker and darker and darker in the world. But let me tell you something. It's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter in the church of the living God. That's why, my brothers and sisters, if you're in the ark of safety, stay in the ark of safety. If you're not in the ark of safety, now is the time to get in the ark of safety because it's going to get worse in the world. But we are living in the best times of the church. All that's ahead of the world, amen, according to the word of God, is chaos and turmoil. Amen. But Jesus says in John chapter 14 and verse 23, he said, he that loveth me will keep my sayings. He said, and I will make a dwelling place with him. Amen. It's a powerful thing. Amen. When you understand and know that God wants to make a dwelling place where you are. God wants to make a dwelling place in your home. God wants to make a dwelling place in this house. And God does doesn't just want to make a dwelling place where you're at, but God desires to make a dwelling place on the inside of you. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. God desires to fill you with his spirit, and it is God living on the inside of you. Jesus tells them, I know that I've got to go. He said, but I'm not going to leave you by yourself. He said in John 14 and 26, he said, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, he said, he's going to send it in my name. He said it's going to bring everything to your remembrance. Everything that I have spoken unto you. He said let not your heart be troubled. In verse 27 he said don't be afraid. He said because I am going to be with you. Can I tell you that Jesus keeps his promises. 
He keeps his promises. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, as he speaks to his disciples, uh, he said, Lo, I am with you always, uh, even until the end of the world. Uh, so that lets me know as a child of God, uh, even when it feels like I'm by myself, uh, he's still right beside me. Uh, he might be silent, uh, but I know that he's still there fighting on my behalf. Uh, I know the enemy may be working just a little bit right now, uh, but I, let me tell you something. Uh, I know God is still by my side. Why? Because he promised according to his word. And in the promises of God, they are yea and Come on, the promises of God are yea and God is a keeper of his promises. He said the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, uh, he said it's going to give you direction and understanding. Uh, amen. According to the times that we are living in, Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 said, but them that know their God, uh, he said they shall be strong. Everybody shout strong. He said they shall be strong and do great exploits. Uh, amen. That mean, that word shall means it's a guaranteed uh, that if you've got a relationship with God, uh, then God is going to use you to do great things uh, and you're going to be able to resist every fiery dart of the enemy. Praise God. Uh, so you don't even have to worry about uh, what the enemy is doing in this last hour. Praise God. Uh, because God is not only on your side, uh, but he gives you the power to Resist the enemy. As a matter of fact, he gives you the power to push back the darkness. Mm. I want you to lift your hands and I want you just to talk to him right now. Uh. Hallelujah. Friend of mine, it pays to know Jesus. You can put your hands down. I said it pays to know Jesus. Uh, amen. The Bible says, amen, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Uh, amen. But let me tell you something. Amen. In order for the gates of hell uh, to not prevail against you, you got to have a revelation with Jesus. Listen, I heard a preacher say this week, uh, he said, in order to understand, to know who you are, you've got to know who Jesus is. Uh, in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18, uh, amen, Pete, Jesus asked the disciples, uh, he said, who do men say that I am? Uh, and they began to come up with all different kind of things that people said about him. Uh, but he said, who do you say that I am? Uh, and Peter opened up his mouth and he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the the living God and amen Jesus looks back at him he says upon this rock Peter he said I'm going to build my church this revelation of you knowing who I am this is what you're going to be able to stand on and he said the gates of hell shall not prevail let me tell you something my brothers and sisters apostolic believers of the Lord Jesus Christ this is the reason why we got to preach the oneness of God this is the reason why why we got to preach Jesus? Uh, we don't need no fancy messages. Uh, but when we preach Jesus, uh, the gates of hell uh, cannot stand against the church. Uh, I don't care what he brings to you. Uh, but when you preach Jesus, uh, hell has got to back up. I remember, praise God, uh, when we were in the Dominican Republic uh, as we were crossing over the oceans uh, and I was contemplating. I didn't know what to preach. Uh, I'd never been overseas before. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I was looking out over the water uh, and I said, God, uh, what do I preach, Lord? Uh, I've never done this before. Uh, he said, just preach me. <laughs> In other words, what he was saying, uh, he said, just give them Jesus. Uh, so you know what I did? Uh, I left my iPad back at the hotel uh, every night. Uh, I walked up to that podium uh, with my Bible, uh, and I just preached Jesus. Uh, I opened up to Matthew 20 and 21, uh, where it says, uh, and his name shall be called Jesus, uh, for he shall save his people uh, from their sins. Uh, and on the first night of that crusade, uh, I told them, uh, I said the Jesus uh, that was going to be born. He was more than just a man, but he was God manifested in the flesh. God loved them so much that he came down through 42 generations, assumed the role of a man, and died for them. Can I tell you that whole week, the witches and the warlocks couldn't do nothing. 
We saw many uh, baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, we saw many filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, why? Because we preach Jesus every night. Uh, I'm reminded of what the Apostle Paul said uh, to the Corinthian church. Uh, he said, I chose to know nothing among you uh, but Jesus and him crucified. Uh, I don't know nothing else uh, but Jesus. Uh, and that's it. Let me tell you something, preachers. Uh, this summer when we're evangelizing, uh, just preach Jesus. Uh, don't try to look for a fancy message. Message. Just preach Acts 2.38. Uh, don't look for a fancy message, uh, but tell them it was Jesus. Come on, clap your hands uh, and give the Lord some praise. I thank the Lord that I know who Jesus is. I know that he is the Father. I know that he is the Son. I remember when we was in, praise God, getting ready to come back from the Dominican Republic. There was a Trinitarian pastor that invited us to come and preach because of what God did in the crusade. We didn't know if we was going to make it. But you know what we said? You know what? They got to hear the message of the oneness of God. This is what a Amen with the Lord allowed her. So we got to go. We went to that church. We came in. It was a little bitty area. No bigger than the first three rows. Amen of this building. Praise God. We walked in and it was filled with people from front to back. The pastor called me up and we began to preach Jesus. Can I tell you people were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And with fire. Why? Because when you preach Jesus, it gives Jesus room to work. Jesus loves when his people uh, just begin to talk about him. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I know that Jesus has power. I want you to talk to him right now. I'm going somewhere. When you preach Jesus, you're preaching power. When you preach Jesus, you're preaching miracles. When you preach Jesus, you're preaching deliverance. Can I tell you that the enemy is going to come and he's going to present opposition before you? But let me tell you something. When you go in the name of the Lord, I'm reminded of what David said when Goliath was beating his chest up against the children of Israel for weeks on end telling me, telling them, send me a man that should fight me. But David being a fella, uh, not a man of war yet, praise God, uh, but he had a call on his life and he believed God. Uh, he walked onto that battlefield. Uh, he saw Goliath beating his chest, uh, talking all kind of nonsense. Uh, he said, you come in a sword in a spirit. Uh, he said, but I come in the name of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Uh, when you come in the name of the Lord, uh, all of hell has got to back up. Uh, when you come in the name of the Lord, uh, I don't care what devils uh, come up against you. Uh, but when you go in the name of Jesus, uh, all of hell has got to be silent. Jesus tells his disciples as he ascends up into the heavens in Acts chapter 1 and 8, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. He said, the power that you're going to get. Amen. In John chapter number 1, he said, it's going to be power to become sons of God. Amen. As a son of God, you've got power. Let me tell you something. I can't stress this enough. You've got power. Turn and tell your neighbor if you've got the Holy Ghost you've got power you have got power when you look up amen what heritage is you often for times find it amen synonymous with inheritance amen and in a general overview it can be done and it is done on many occasions amen but there is a subtle difference between the words that has major implications when it comes to especially dealing with the people of God amen inheritance deals with monetary means and 
property and material things. Amen. Listen, it was common for a father or a parent to pass down an inheritance to their children. Amen. You see the prodigal son when he went before his father and he said, Father, give me all of my inheritance, my money, my riches and possessions. And we saw, amen, the prodigal son go and spend all that he had until he had nothing left. Amen. Inheritance deals more with physical properties and possessions that can be passed down. But when you talk about heritage, amen, especially when it deals with God and his people, it deals, amen, not with just passed down material things, but it deals with passed down moral standards, knowledge, attributes that are passed down from one generation to the next. Amen. Listen, amen. This cannot be bought with a price. You can't go to the store and buy power from on high. Amen. As a matter of fact, I'm reminded, amen, of the sorcerer Simeon. Amen. He, put, he had bewitched everybody in the region thinking that he was a man of God. Amen. But when Philip came and Philip preached Jesus, uh, they saw the real power to the point where Simeon the sorcerer even had to subject himself to the name. Amen. To the point where he saw God working in in such ways that when Peter and John came and laid hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost, he saw the power that came from God's people and he tried to buy it. But Peter had to tell him, your heart is not in the right place. Why? Because this is not something that can be bought with money. But if you want power from God, you got to be willing to surrender yourself. You've got to be willing to surrender yourself. Somebody shout surrender. You've got to be willing to submit yourself under the mighty hand of God. You've got to be willing to say, you know what, first God, amen, I need power, God, to keep my own body under subjection. That's the first dimension, amen, of having power and authority. Before God ever gives you the ability, amen, to go and to reach the city. Before God ever gives you the ability to go and reach a community. Yes, you can go in the name of the Lord, but I'm talking about real Bible power. Amen. In order for you to have the kind of power that God desires to give you, you've got to have power to keep your own body under subjection. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you can't go in the name of Jesus to a community when you haven't subjected yourself to the name of Jesus behind closed doors. You can't go in the power of God to your community if you haven't submitted to the power of God in your own body. The first dimension of having power and seeing the power of God operate is God gives you power to tell the devil no. Paul said the good that I would do, he said, I wanted to do, I couldn't do because of the evil that was present. He said, who shall save me of the body of this death? He recognized that I wanted to do everything that was right. But there was another law that was working in my body. This is why the Holy Ghost is important. You know, we're living in a time where people think that, amen, you don't have to have the Holy Ghost to be saved. But let me tell you something. Without the Holy Ghost, you can't tell the devil no. You can say, I love Jesus, and you really mean it. But listen, when the devil comes knocking at your door, you don't have what you need to say, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I want you to just talk to him right now. Ah, uh, Jesus, help us right now. Lord, I pray, God, that you would give somebody this revelation, Lord, that the Holy Ghost is not just for a faithful few, but, God, your word says that your spirit, Lord, is for the, our children and our children's children and to all of them that are far off, God. It's not just for the Pentecostals. It's not just for the apostolics, but it's for anybody that has received you, God, that calls you their Lord and Savior. He said to them that receive him, to them gave me power to become sons of God. Yeah. 
Adam was operating in this authority until he sinned against God. That's the reason why sin, you got to stay away from it. Turn and tell your neighbor, you got to stay away from sin. Because when you, when you participate in sin, it robs you of the authority that God said is yours. Samson, whew, Jesus, powerful, mightily used of God. But because Samson couldn't leave sin alone, God said enough is enough and allowed him to be captured, his, his locks being cut, and he found himself in a pit between two pillars with his eyes plucked out. Sin robs you of your vision. It robs you of the power of God that God said is yours. But when you repent, turn and tell your neighbor, repent. When you repent, God will restore you. I thank the Lord that he is faithful and just to forgive. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but listen, God is faithful and just to forgive you. Listen, if you have fallen, you can get back up again. Turn and tell your neighbor, you can get back up again. But Adam, amen, he, he fell, amen, in the transgression. He sinned against God, and he lost that heritage, amen, of power and authority. And the heritage that he exchanged it for was heritage of ungodliness and death and destruction, amen. But God did not leave humanity in that fallen state, amen. But the Bible says uh, when we were, amen, were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, uh, we had no hope, amen and we were without God in the world. God, amen, had a strategic plan that at an appointed time that he was going to come and restore back, praise God, the heritage that is due to his people. And the Bible lets us know that we had no access before Jesus to righteousness and holiness and sanctification. But now that we have been justified through his blood, whoo, we have been justified through his blood. He has restored us. As Peter said, that Jesus must reign until the restitution of all things. That means that God desires to restore all things back to his original state. Don't you know, praise God, before you came into this world, the original state that God orchestrated and ordained for you is not the life that the devil wrapped you up in, but God ordained you to be a child of God but because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity when we came into this world we were born under a curse but I thank the Lord that he didn't leave us in a fallen state but the Bible says that he was the firstborn of many brethren so when he got up out of the grave he was the first to declare all oh, Power and authority is given unto me both in heaven and in earth. And the Bible says that he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That right hand of the throne of God is a place of power, authority, amen, and rest. Is there anybody in the room that needs rest for your soul? Can I tell you today that you can find it in the Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible says, and it lets us know that we sit in heaven heavenly places in Christ Jesus and because Jesus sits in a place of rest when you receive Jesus when you get the Holy Ghost you receive rest you receive power you receive authority can I tell you today that the devil wants you to think that sin and iniquity is your portion that it's always going to be like this I don't know who I'm talking to but I come to dispel the lies of the enemy today that God's got greater for you. God's got more for you. Power is your portion. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says that when he went into Capernaum, said they sat in darkness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
He said they sat in darkness. But when Jesus stepped in, they saw great light. You know, the great light that they saw was not just any light, but it was a great light. You want to know why it was great light? Because Jesus is not just an ordinary man. But John said in John 1, and I believe it was 4 and 5, he said there was a man that, came, that was sent from God to bear witness of the light. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That light of every man that cometh into the world. So the great light that they saw in Capernaum that sat in darkness was not just any light. It was the light. He was the light. The light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Did you not know that Jesus was the first one to declare that I am the light of the world? And then he turns around and declares and says, you are the light of the world. Is he confused? Did he make a mistake? No, what he is saying is, is when you understand and know who I am, hmm, then you can understand and know who you are. When you know who Jesus is, then you can recognize who you are. That you are not just some insignificant individual. You are not just some little speck, amen, in a broad spectrum of the human family. But you are the light of the world. That means that when you step on your job, you're the light. <laughs> Woo. That means that when you step in your community, you ought to step in your community and say, I am the light of this community. God strategically put me here to be a light. That means that I've got to let my light shine. That means that you can't be reserved and keep it to yourself. But the powerful thing about light is that before the light can shine, it's got to be connected to the power. I love about major cities. Listen, going to a major city is not vacation. You need a vacation from the vacation. If you go to New York, Chicago, you know, all those major cities. But what is so beautiful about the big cities, no matter how dark it is outside, there's always light. <laughs> you know what's so, what? we were in Chicago and it was storming out on the water. I'm talking about storming, storming. Turn to tell your neighbor, say, storming, storming. Storm, storm. <laughs> but as we were walking outside, all we felt was a little drizzle. And I thought to myself, how is it storming out there, but all we feel is a drizzle right here? Because when you're in the big city, the rain, the wind, it's cut by the buildings. Hear me. Jesus said that you are a city that cannot be hid. So that means that where the church is, no matter how dark it is, but where the church is, there may be storms happening all around the community. But when you're in the church, you may feel the drizzle. Tell them, but you won't be affected by it. Won't you turn and tell your neighbor, the darkness may be in the wall, but when you're in the church, you're standing in the light. It might be dark in the wall, but when you're in the church, Noah, when they built the ark, and the Bible says that the ark was lifted above the earth. It said it was lifted above the earth by the same storm that he sent to destroy. They didn't feel no rain. The door never, sit, water never seeped through the door, but the Bible says that God is the one that shut the door. Let me tell you something, church. The church may have a whole lot of problems going on in it, but let me tell you something. It's the best place that you can be. I feel God, he's talking to somebody right now. 
I don't know why I'm filled to tell this, but listen, when the Apostle Paul was gotten on the ship, I believe they were headed, praise God. I can't remember exactly where they were headed, but the Bible says that there was a storm that arose and the sail, and the shipmen, amen, was seeing the rocks as they were too close to the rocks. And the Bible says that the shipmen said, you know what, we're leaving the boat. And they said, we're getting ready to get out of here. But Paul looked at them and he said, accept you abide in the ship. He said, you cannot be saved. Why? Why is he telling them that? Because the ship is the best place that you can be. Listen, the light is in the church. Yeah. I want you to grab the person's hand next to you. We're getting ready to pray. Mm. I want you to begin to pray for them. I believe that there's getting ready to be some power that's getting ready to be released in this room. I believe there's people in the room that came in here and they're like that plug, praise God, uh, that when you plug that thing into the wall, it's just get barely going in and it, if getting ready to fall out, they feel like they're getting ready to disconnect from the source. Uh, they feel like life has gotten too hard uh, and they don't feel the power of God. They get ready to throw in the towel, uh, but God has come to brought you here to Bethesda Temple to tell you, uh, don't throw in the towel because he's getting ready to renew your strength. Uh, he said, they that wait upon the Lord. He shall renew your strength. You're going to run and not be weary. You're going to mount up his wings. His knees. Come on, God is getting ready to send renewed strength. I need some Holy Ghost believers just to begin to call on the name of the Lord. And I believe there's getting ready to be an infusion of power because when you're connected to the power of God, God will refresh you in the light. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I know I didn't get to the end of the word today, but I believe that God wants to refresh somebody. God wants to restore somebody. There's somebody today. You're about to let the light go out because you feel like life has beat you down. But God has sent you to Bethesda Temple today because he's looking to refresh you. He's looking to renew you. He's looking to refuse you. He's looking to rekindle the fire. You've lost your fire. But let me tell you something. God has brought you to Bethesda Temple because he's trying to reignite the fire. He's trying to set you up. Come on, church. Come on, don't you give up. Come on, I'm telling you. There are people even right now, they feel like they're getting ready to throw in the towel. They said, if something doesn't happen today, then I'm going to walk away from this thing. But God is talking directly to you, my brother, my sister. And he said, don't give up because your refreshing is here. Don't give up because your healing is here. Don't give up because God's getting ready. Ready to rekindle your fire? Come on, come on, come on, come on. If you need God to rekindle your fire, come on, I want you to come to the altar right now. Come on, if you need a refreshing in your soul, God wants you to come to the altar right now. Come on, if you need a refreshing in the Holy Ghost, Jesus wants to give it to you right now. If you need a refreshing in your soul, come on, I'm telling you, God wants to give it to you. If you've fallen and you feel like you can't give it up, I'm telling you, God wants to wake he wants to pick you up uh, and he wants to restore you uh, if you feel like you're hurting and broken uh, I'm telling you God wants to put you back together right now come on Come on, that's it. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Maybe we'll get to the rest another time. But let me tell you something. God wants to do a work right now. Come on, I'm telling you. If you feel like you're hanging on by a thread, God wants to refresh and restore you today. He doesn't want you to walk around on empty. But God wants you to be filled up with his power and presence. God wants you to be filled up with his word. God wants 
you to f- be filled up with this joy and peace. Uh, if, you, if you're lacking peace in your life, uh, he wants to restore your peace. Uh, he wants to give you peace that passes all understanding. Uh, but you've got to be willing to take those steps uh, and don't let the enemy trick you uh, into thinking that you've got to throw in the towel. Uh, but you ought to say, I'm going to get my refreshing. Come on, you're in the church right now. Come on, it's shining bright in the church. It's shining bright right now in our midst. Come on, God is shining amongst this congregation right now. And he's looking for somebody that may feel like they're sitting in darkness. And he's saying, let me shine upon you. Let me bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Come on, come on, come on, I'm telling you. Come on, it was storming out over Lake Michigan, but all we felt was a drizzle in the city of Chicago. Why? Because when you're in the city, when you're in the city, let me tell you something. God knows how to make what's happening out there look like nothing in here. God knows how to turn the storm that's out there, and he knows how to turn it into something that just drizzles, that waters your seed to continue to grow. God knows how to turn the storm of your life uh, into a testimony. Uh, God knows how to turn the trial of your life uh, into a place of power. God knows how to turn your place of death uh, into a place of resurrection. Come on, it was at the place of Jesus' death where, amen, he was able to take the keys from Satan, amen, and to rise up in power and authority. If you feel like you're in a deadly situation right now, I'm telling you, God knows how to turn that thing around to where you walk out with power. Come on, talk to him. Come on, if you're here at the altar, come on, I want you to talk to him right now. Come on, talk to him. Cry out to him. Come on, it's time to go for broke. Come on, it's time to go for broke. Come on, God was speaking to me yesterday morning, early in the morning when I was driving to Kokomo, and he said that there are too many people in the body of Christ that have lost their hunger and desire for me. And I was like, God, what do you mean? He said they're going through the motions of just doing church, but they don't have a desire to please me. They have a desire to please the traditions of the house. They have a desire to please the daily routine of being a Christian. He said, but they don't have a desire to please me. He said, it's time. For my people to get their hunger and desire back for me. Come on, talk to him. Come on, talk to him. Come on, he reminded me of the season when I would come into the house from work and I would be there, but I would not be there. He reminded me of the season when I was working 70 hours a week. I would come into the house and the children, praise God, would ask me questions and I would give up, get automated, give them automated responses. He reminded me of the season when I was working so much trying to provide, doing what I knew how to do, praise God, but I was coming home and not engaging with my wife and children, and he said, you know what, during that season, I remember, he said, you remember, praise God, when I told you that you need to quit working so much, he said, trust me, while you're trying to provide for your family, you're losing your family. That's how people are in the house of God. 
They're trying so hard to fulfill the daily routines of being a Christian, the daily routines of just doing their to-do check-off list, that they're losing sight of what is important. I'm reminded of Martha and Mary. Martha was working so much that she failed to realize that the King of kings and Lord of lords was in her midst. And Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. And Martha got upset and said, why don't you get up and do something? But Jesus said, she chose the good part. She recognized that when Jesus is in our midst, all work has got to cease. And the children of Israel were dedicating the temple of Solomon. And the Bible says they came into the temple and the trumpets were sounding and the people of God were dancing and shouting and rejoicing. But when God stepped into the room, his presence came in, everything became silent. Why? Because when Jesus steps in, <laughs> he becomes the number one priority. <laughs> the trumpet's sounding was good. The people shouting was awesome, but when the mist came in, all flesh had to be silent. When Jesus came into the midst of Martha and Mary, Mary recognized there's no work that's worth me missing this moment. But I'm going to lay at the feet of the master. You just talk to the Lord. Follow the Spirit of God. God is trying to speak. Talk to him. Come on. Come on, talk to him.
Come on, I want somebody. I know God is speaking to somebody to speak out of your mouth what he's trying to speak. I want you to obey the Lord right now. Come on, come on, worship the Lord right now. Here's how I know that what was just spoken was God. I want you all to cut the live, please. Cut the live in the back. 